Good morning. Welcome to you. This is Spiritual Awakenings with Linda Minner, and I am at a campground, Twin Lakes Campground in North Carolina. Tonight, my husband will play with his band, Backwoods Company Band, and we'll enjoy music and friendship and fun times. We got here yesterday, and I'd just like to talk to you today about friendship in this beautiful campground. You can see the trees behind me and maybe hear some birds and children playing and laughing. So there's, there's a lot to the morning in a campground. I am not known as a camper. I am the beach girl, uh, but I'm really having a nice time and I wanna share part of that time with you. There's a scripture, Proverbs 27, verse nine. A sweet friendship refreshes the soul. Proverbs 27, 9. A sweet friendship refreshes the soul. Will you take a moment and just think of even one friend that you've had in your life? Could be somebody now or somebody from the past. How does that friendship refresh your soul? If you say, well, I'm, I'm somebody that feels very much alone today and have no friends. Well, let me reassure you that Jesus is your friend today, yesterday, always will be. He says that you are the beloved of the Lord, the beloved of Jesus. For those of you that do have a friend or maybe many friends, isn't it a blessing? Doesn't the sweetness of it refresh your soul? Sometimes we say, well, I have friendships, but they've been broken and that hurt me. I ask the Lord to heal you of that hurt from your past whether the type of friendship was a family member or not a blood relative, but you're not with them today and you wish you could be. I ask for healing in your heart. If there's any forgiveness that needs to happen, I ask that that forgiveness could flow through you right now from the top of your head, down into your heart, into your lungs, your body, down to the tip of your toes, so that with God's help, you could feel that forgiveness today. Well, I said I would talk about friendship. We, uh, the song says, what a friend we have in Jesus. And we do have a friend in Jesus. Jesus left us the Holy Spirit and he's our friend too. But I wanna talk about some friends that I'm camping with this weekend. There's a couple, Jeff and Michelle, that we've known for a long time. And they've got their daughter and son-in-law here and a little grandbaby named Willow. Now they call her Willie and she is a doll. She's fun to watch jump up and down in her jumpy seat, uh, it's attached to the camper. And she can, and it's safe, it's perfectly safe, but she will let her little feet bounce up and down and you can see her little legs pushing herself off the ground. And she does it with such joy that I'm amazed to watch her. I remember when my own child was small and how much fun that was. Well, these friends have really blessed our lives. Now, Jeff and Scott and Ian, a third friend, play in a band together, Backwoods Company Band, and that's why we're here this weekend. Tonight, they're gonna to be playing for the campers in this campground, and we're gonna have a good time. They're talented, but one of the reasons their band is so special is that they are all friends and have been friends for a very long time. And the wives are friends, and that's a blessing. A lot of bands you hear of, they may not get along or there's drugs or alcohol or, you know, not faithful to their wives. This band is not like that at all. And this is not a, a an advertisement for their band. It's the point is they're all friends. They're faithful to each other. Their, their friendship is faithful and it's true. And that's how come we all have fun when they're playing in the band. I mentioned Proverbs 27, nine, a sweet friendship refreshes the soul. When I was a teenager, I had a sweet friend, Susan. I was raised Roman Catholic and Catholics back that day had a Bible that maybe they put in the house, but they didn't take it and read it every day. It was just not our practice. But Susan gave me a Roman Catholic Bible. She was someone that, that worshiped in the assemblies of God. I may have mentioned her to you before in a earlier video. Susan's in heaven now, but she was such a sweet friend and she did refresh my soul. Back in high school, we'd go to my house and we'd have ice cream together and laugh together. And 
She'd always want me to read the Bible, but I just took that Bible she gave me and I would tuck it in my suitcase because that was my good luck charm. And that's just fine if you have a Bible and you want to use it as your good luck charm, that's fine too. But there's something deeper within that Bible. There's scripture and words from the Lord that encourage, that edify, that teach, that anoint. So if you haven't picked up your Bible lately and dusted it off, I encourage you to do that. Maybe you start with Proverbs 7, excuse me, 27, 9. A sweet friendship refreshes the soul. Friendship is a beautiful thing. It can be healing and lovely. It can be a time when you laugh or have tea. I have friends that I have tea with sometimes or go out to lunch. I don't go out very often as a retiree. I try to cook at home. But when I go out with them, it's special. Like last night, the friends at the campground, we went out to dinner and we just enjoyed a meal together. A little Mexican restaurant. I'm not a big Mexican fan, but that didn't matter. I was with friends. There was fellowship. Jeff, like me, likes to pray before a meal and likes to pray out loud. And so he said a prayer before the meal that really touched me. And he said, God, thanks. And we said, amen. And he looked at me and I looked at him and he said, you know, it doesn't have to be long or anything. And I'm paraphrasing, but the point was we gave thanks. Thanks for the friendship. Thanks to God for the meal. What are you thankful for today? Friendship. What a sweet and blessed thing. I have a friend that went to Shrinemont recently and she's in her 80s. And God bless her. She uses one of those pushy carts, uh, rolling carts, uh, um, the point is, she, in her 80s, is still offering prayer and service to youth. So that's something you can do as a friend. You can, you can reach out to others that don't have to be your age. You can, if you're older, you can reach out to youth. If you're younger, you can reach out to older people. Because I know some of those older people just need a touch on the hand, maybe a smile or a sweet word. There's so much love in action that we can have. Friendship is such a gift. I like to think, although I'm Sam's mom, that we're kind of friends, even though we're family. It's my son. I like to think my husband is my friend, the dearest friend in the world. And what do friends, how do they treat each other? Well, much like Jesus treats us with patience, kindness, faithfulness, with hope and love. And there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I can think of friends through the years who have stuck close with me during hard times, during good times, during laughter, during tears. And they didn't look away. They didn't go away. They stayed close. I've got friends from when I worked at the city of Virginia Beach, one of them. She still t stays in touch to this day. We talk about Jesus. We talk on the phone. It, it's not every day, but I know when she calls, we'll pick up where we left off. Do you have a friend like that? You can just pick up where you left off from the conversation before. Some of my sweetest friends are friends I have in Jesus. But I have friends that don't talk about the Lord, don't know the Lord. And I try to encourage them. Maybe I'm not using words from the Bible, specific quotes from the Bible, and that's okay. Being a friend means loving at all times, in all circumstances. Sometimes that friendship can be overwhelming and we have to step away for a while. But you know what you can still do if you step away from a friendship? You can still pray for that person and lift them up to the Lord. And you can go back to that friend if time has passed and say, hey, if I've done anything to hurt you, I'm so sorry. Can we be friends again? And if they have to step away, then try to forgive them. Honor the friendship you had. Is there a friend in your heart today that you maybe want to write a note to? or call on the phone, or maybe they're past like my friend Susan that I knew in high school. They're in heaven and I can't, can't talk to her, but I can think of her. And you see my smile, it gives me joy. So if you have a friend, 
Cherish that friendship. Let them know that you care about them, that they are special and honored and true. My friend, God loves you. May he keep you today. May he surround you with friends and health and hope and peace that we can't even explain. Peace that passes all understanding. My prayer for you today is that you would know that you are the beloved of the Lord, loved just as you are. And if there are ways that he wants to mold you as himself, if you give him permission, he'll do it. If you have never done this, would you say, Jesus, come into my heart, forgive my sins and be my savior. And I promise you, he will do it. My life changed years ago, decades ago, when I prayed a prayer like that. And it's never been the same. So God be with you, heal you, bless you, and keep you. Until we meet again, Spiritual Awakenings with Linda Minner. God bless you.